Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the basics of a tracking generator. Uh, what it is and a quick example of how you use it. Uh, so what a tracking generator is, is uh, typically an accessory, uh, an optional feature in many cases of, uh, of spectrum analyzers. And uh, they're used to help you measure the frequency response of uh, components like filters and things like that. So. Um, talk a little bit about what it is. So first thing we'll do is uh, before we talk about uh, the tracking generator itself, so a quick little review of how uh, a swept spectrum analyzer works. Uh, you may have seen the video that I did that uh, used this graphic here that kind of talked about the block diagram of a spectrum analyzer. Uh, basically where you've got an RF input and the purpose of the spectrum analyzer is to measure you know frequency or amplitude versus frequency. Okay, amplitude in the y-axis, frequency in the x-axis. And it does so by acting like a tuned receiver. Where we've got a frequency range of interest coming into the analyzer. We're setting up the analyzer to sweep across that frequency range. And it does so by using a ramp generator to sweep a local oscillator into a mixer, into a set of filters, and then detect the output and feed that to the y-input. Okay, and then that sweep voltage is essentially what drives the horizontal or the x-axis. So as the voltage goes up, the frequency goes up, so it, we're also sweeping across and we're essentially measuring the amplitude of your signal at various frequencies across the span. That's essentially what the spectrum analyzer does. Okay, and that's what's going on here. So if we look at this one, we can see we're, we've got a center frequency of uh, 1.6 gigahertz, uh, sweeping to 3.2 gig. Okay. And uh, we can see we're sweeping in 50 milliseconds, and uh, that's essentially what that instrument, what that uh, instrument is doing there. So, what a tracking generator is is it allows you to provide a signal at an output that is equal to the frequency that you happen to be sweeping through at that instant. And the way it works is this: we take that same ramp voltage that would be that's used to tune the local oscillator here to essentially you know, tune the analyzer and sweep across the frequency range, we use that same uh, ramp voltage to drive another voltage controlled oscillator, okay, this one whose output frequency is equal to whatever frequency, wherever we are in that span at that instant. So uh, when we start off at the bottom of the ramp, we're starting off at our, our low or our start frequency, okay, uh, that's where we'd be starting off here on the display, and then also the output of the tracking generator then is at that frequency at our start frequency okay and then as the tune voltage sweeps up to sweep through until we get to our stop frequency at the end okay we're going to sweep through with this local oscillator here or this VCO to create an output that is going to be at this frequency here so the idea is is that now you've got an output that you can use to apply to some device under test okay and then you can take the response of the device and bring that up into the spectrum analyzer input. So if this device that you're testing happens to be a filter or something like that, uh, you can actually look at its frequency response on the spectrum analyzer display because now you're applying a signal into the input that is equal to the frequency that you're measuring as you're sweeping across. So you're just going to see the response of that filter okay, in that display. Okay. So a quick uh, view of how this works. We'll take a a quick look at this, uh, some slower settings here. What I'll do is I'm going to change uh, you know, center frequency here to say oh, 10 megahertz. Okay, let's set a span of also 10 megahertz. So, so we're looking at a much limited span here. So you can see my center frequency and span are both 10 meg. Okay, so I'm sweeping essentially from 5 megahertz to 15 megahertz. And I'm also going to take my sweep time and uh, let's adjust my sweep time. And make it slower so you can kind of see it happening here. So if I make my sweep time like five seconds, okay, so now at the sweep time at five seconds, you can actually see this thing sweeping across, okay. So what we can actually take the tracking generator, what I'll do is I'll turn it on, okay, if I turn the tracking generator on on this guy here, okay, so the tracking generator is now on. I'm going to turn the menu off, and uh, if I connect the tracking generator to the scope, okay we can actually see the frequency ramping up. If I pull back so you can see both, you can kind of still see the sweep going on here uh, and the frequency going up. Okay, so we're going, so the, the scope is now showing me essentially 5 megahertz ramping up to 15 megahertz and then sweeping back down again. 
Uh, another way to kind of look at this, I'll take the out, take that output. Let's bring it up into the frequency counter, okay? And uh, we can kind of watch it sweeping from five through ten up to 15 megahertz, and then it uh, quickly ramps back down. It's not spending any time you know, staying there, but you can kind of see it going from five to 15 megahertz because I made this thing sweep you know, really slow. So uh, as you can imagine, if we just took the end of this coax, okay, and just connected it right back into the spectrum analyzer input, okay. We're just looking at the frequency response of this coax, and if you look, uh, as you can expect, over this very narrow frequency range, this coax is, you know, basically right at zero. Okay, so uh, there's no loss, no, you know, or anything like that. It's a very flat response over this 5 to 15 megahertz. Okay, as you as you'd probably expect. Now, the real useful thing with a tracking generator is to look at uh, things like filters and and things like that. So. Probably the simplest filter that I could uh, show you here that's got a pretty dramatic response is something called a, a quarter wavelength stub uh, filter. So I've got a piece of coax here. This coax is about five feet long. It's uh, pretty close to 60 inches. And I've got a T connected here. So uh, what we're going to look at is the fact that, you know, this is a, we're going to look at the response of this as a quarter wavelength transmission line uh, stub filter, like a notch filter. Uh, any quarter wavelength transmission line. Uh, left open circuit will look like a short circuit at whatever frequency it's a quarter, you know, where it becomes a quarter wavelength. And uh, there's some numbers where you can calculate it out. So if you think a quarter wave or a wavelength of an RF signal in free space in inches is 11,803 inches divided by the frequency in megahertz. You divide that by four, that'll give us the quarter wavelength length in free space. If we're taking a, a foam uh, type of dielectric like this that uh, the velocity factor is typically 66 percent so that says a quarter wavelength in coax in inches is 66 percent of this which is 1947.5 inches divided by frequency in megahertz the other way we can turn this ar around and say well okay if I have a piece of coax that's about 60 inches long Okay, and I so I could put that that formula that right in here and say 1947.5 inches divided by 60 will give me a frequency. In this case, it's about 32 megahertz. Um, and the, uh, I'm going to connect this up uh, and use this as a filter, and we'll sh we'll take a look at that response. So if we bring this uh, this guy back over here, I'm going to disconnect the output of the tracking generator. So now we're kind of sitting back, uh, uh, you know, looking at the noise floor here again. And I'm going to connect this guy up with this T. Now the T is going to add about three quarters of an inch, so I've actually got about 60.75 inches or so of coax length that I've added, you know, say from this point all the way down to the open circuit end. Okay. And uh, so what I'll do is I'll take the output of the tracking generator here and connect that back up here. And I'm going to adjust uh, my stop frequency now instead of being 15 megahertz. Let me set it to say 50 megahertz. Okay. And uh, so now as we watch this thing sweep, you can actually see there's a notch that, that's going in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the uh, sweep speed back up again, okay, so it just kind of updates really quick. So now I can see a notch right here. So what frequency is that at? Let's uh, throw a marker on here. And if I move this marker down into that notch, okay, we can see right there is right at, that marker is right at 32 megahertz, okay. So this simple five foot long piece of coax that's open at the end it looks like a short right at 32 megahertz and we can actually see that going on right here and this is actually a pretty common thing to do you know uh, if you're trying to reject a particular frequency or something like that you can use a quarter wavelength stub like this to notch that frequency out okay now of course um, this also works for any odd wavelength uh, for the uh, or a, any odd multiple of quarter waves so um, so obviously at, at 32 megahertz we'll have this, but then at three times this frequency we'll have a notch as well. So if I change my stop frequency to say 100 megahertz, okay, now I can see I've got a notch here, okay, and if we move that marker, oops, let's go back and put this back over here, let's go back and grab the marker and pull that marker down into this one. There's our first mark right there, that's the one at 32 megahertz, okay. This other one we'd imagine would be three times higher than that, right, because that's the, uh, the third harmonic. So that should be at, uh, there it is, 96 megahertz right there. Okay, 
So the same piece of coax looks like a short circuit at 96 megahertz and at 32 megahertz. But this is just a quick example of what a tracking generator is, okay? What it, you know, how it relates to the spectrum analyzer operation, and one quick example looking at a quick, simple uh, open circuit uh, quarter wavelength stub notch filter and looking at its response. So, uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed and uh, comments are welcome. Thank you.